Okay, hey guys. Um, so here we'll be doing flow of liquid in a cylinder with an analyst. So you have your. I think I'll just change the color for the analyst. Don't want it to be the same as water. And you have water flowing in this direction. Hmm. Okay. All right. So here let's. Let's consider another cylinder, same as what we have considered in the previous one. Let's just define, say, R as the maximum radius. This is KR, and this can be taken as delta R. The reason why we are defining, sorry, lambda R. The reason why we define this as lambda R, because unlike in normal cylindrical flow, which we have done previously. Where the maximum velocity is at the center, when you have an analyst, you are essentially like creating two cylinders. Okay. And over here, this is the velocity distribution. So same as what we had done last time, let's do the momentum balance. So the rate of momentum due to conventional transport. Across z is equal to zero is equal to the area, which is two pi r into delta r. When you look from the top, you can just see that um, we are we are considering a micro balance for a small cylinder. With a width of delta r. So it's similar to what we had done last time, but we'll finally change the boundary conditions uh, because there we did not have another wall. Okay, so it'll be two pi r into delta r into phi z z at z is equal to zero, and similarly the rate of momentum transfer at z is equal to l is equal to two pi r delta r z z at z is equal to l, and similarly same to last time the rate of momentum transfer. At r is equal to r is equal to two pi r into l. That's the width into phi r z at r is equal to r. And here is the p at r is equal to r plus delta r would be two pi r. Now it's instead of two pi r, it should be two pi r plus delta r. But r should be just it's negligible, so you can still write in this two pi r l. Now we just makes the equation easier. Two pi r uh, l into phi r z is equal to r plus delta r, and finally the gravitational uh, term is also comes into the play. So you can just take the volume of this, which is two pi r to delta r into l. That into density gives a mass, into the acceleration of gravity gives a gravitational force. So you can do the overall mass balance, uh, the momentum balance for this, same as what we have done last time. We just divide the entire thing uh, by 2 pi delta r l, and on dividing this, what you get is phi z z at z is equal to zero. There's an r here minus r z z at z is equal to l whole divided by l plus. Now here you have it's r minus r plus uh, delta r, and I'm just going to move that to the other side. So I can just get it. This would be rho g r, uh, and this when I move it to the other side, this will become phi r z r plus delta r minus r z r just r. Okay, and this uh, as a whole, you have r on this side and on this side, and that's divided by delta r. Okay, now here what can be done is you can say delta r tends to zero, so we can make this in differential form. So this will become rho phi r z. It's r. Uh, I'll just write it here divided by rho r. And over here that's just z, z is equal to zero minus phi z z as it is equal to l. We'll divide it by L, and I'm just taking this rho g inside and I'm putting the r outside. This is the same as what we did last time. 
Now, continuing that same path, you can say RZ is equal to 2RZ, uh, which is your shear plus your momentum, this thing, which is your. This initially, what was mentioned as phi is the combined uh, momentum flux, mm. and now we have just distributed it. Okay, and now this is R to VZ. Uh, now, here the term VR is 0, so this can be taken as 0. And now for the other one, which is phi zz, here you have pressure plus tau zz plus phi vz dz. So at z is equal to zero and at z is equal to l, this would be the same value. So you don't have to consider this term. Now tau zz is minus two you know, t by vz by z which is also zero. So you have to consider this term as well. So when using this equation, there's just two terms, one in each. You can substitute that here. What you'll get is just do r to rz by do of r is equal to, now I'm going to skip a step here. This is the same as the last video. Since you got the rho g inside, how this is supposed to be, it will be p0, um, oh, just sorry, p, plus rho g 0 minus p plus rho g l okay so now here what we are going to do is just because we have uh, this term here it going to combine them together to get p0 minus pl by l into whole by r that is the same as what we did last time uh, you can just look back in the previous video and you will get the same uh, definition. Yeah. Oh, just sorry. Sorry about that. This should be. I just wanted to make one correction. It's P minus rho GH. And some here also it's minus because it's minus of minus or even just to give us plus. It doesn't really matter. Uh, it depends. You can give either term. On either side, it's just conventionally what is given. Uh, so it's P plus, uh, sorry, minus rho GL, and it's just P0 minus PL. Okay, so now let's put that boundary differential equations, sorry, the boundary conditions after integration. So integrating this, you get R PRZ is equal to P0 minus PL uh, squared by 2L plus C1. And this is basically RZ into P0 minus PL by R, R by 2L plus C1 by R. Okay, and now here you know tau RZ is equal to 0 at, sorry about that. Yeah, so you know tau RZ is equal to 0 at R is equal to lambda R. Okay, so in this case, let's put R is equal to lambda R. This should be 0, this P0 minus PL to lambda r by 2l plus c1 by lambda r and this is nothing but c1 is equal to minus p0 minus pl lambda r square by 2l and using this you can just take the equation uh, and substitute that with c1 and we get I'm just going to erase this Yeah. So now we get two RZ uh, taking C1 and substituting that with the value which we had got before. Uh, we will be getting Z is equal to P0 minus PL R to L R by R minus lambda R by R. Uh, it's a bit, um, you have to do it properly, uh, it just gets a bit confusing. That's the first part, and now you can just take TVZ by TR is equal to P0 minus PL by 2L R, R by R minus lambda R by R. Okay, so now here you just bring this to the right hand side and then you integrate. I'll just put this term here quickly. 
to a new XR. And on integration of this term, which is R by R minus lambda square, R by R. So this whole thing will be integrated by R. So on solving this differential, what we get is, so here you will get two constants. We get Vz is equal to minus P0 minus PL R square by 4 nu L. And in bracket is just R by R square minus 2 lambda square ln R by R plus C2. So here you have two different uh, unknowns. One is lambda and other is C2. So what you can do is you know there are two constants. There's R is equal to at R is equal to R, Vz is equal to 0 and at R is equal to Kr which is the annulus side. Vz is also equal to 0. So you can just substitute these two and finally we will arrive at the equation Sorry about that. Vz is equal to V0 minus PL 4 nu L R square as 1 minus R by R square minus 1 minus K square ln 1 by K ln R by R. So this is a bit confusing. Uh, it takes some time but you will get back to this uh, equation. Okay, now how do we find the maximum velocity? So you just take dvz by dr should be equal to 0. And on solving this, you will find that r is equal to delta r would be the solution for this. Um, and you can solve this and you can finally get uh, the final, what is the maximum velocity as well, uh, once you know the value of delta r. And delta square can be calculated from just the equation which we solved above so sh shouldn't be a problem and finally the average velocity for this we said is 0 to 2 pi S same as what we did last time but here instead of 0 to r you will have k of r to r vz r tr uh, 0 to 2 pi k r r tr T theta and on solving this you will be getting the average velocity and the mass flow rate is nothing but the cross sectional area into density into the average velocity now, this is the same as what we did last time uh, you can just use the pi r square here which is a cross sectional area that into density into your average velocity should give you the result for the same Okay, and here one thing to remember is it's pi r square minus 1 minus k square. So that, that's the only thing to watch out here. And similarly, you will also have to get the cross sectional area k z minus 2 rz at r is equal to kr, and that's for the force exerted on the surface the inner side and the outer side would just be just remove the k that's it and this is to rz that is r is equal to uh, so one thing you can do is that the, the directions would be opposite for two and this is similar when you consider uh, with two plates it would be something similar to this as well okay so that's uh, that's the different case that we have done uh, with cylindrical pipe. Okay. Thank you.